Well, hey there folks, welcome back once again to the Hop House. It's Eddie here, it's time for another beer review. Uh, and it's another one of our quintessential British beers. So we'll look at the more traditional stuff. If you just found us here on YouTube, and I'll say this at the beginning of all these videos, um, but welcome along to the Hop House. We like hoppy beer, we like house music. If you like either of those, or both, give us one of those. Give us a like, share, subscribe to this channel. Okay, so um, quintessential British beers. We're talking about stuff that if you had someone coming from abroad that maybe is coming to the UK for the first time or hasn't been to the UK for a bit or whatever, and they're thinking, you know, I want to try some, some of your classic styles of British beer. Uh, talking real ales here. So I'm not really talking, like, I'm not going to, I'm never going to advise anyone to drink Carling. It's just not my bag, but if they like lagers, they'll probably say, well, Carling is the number one. Knock yourself out. And after 10 pints, you'll probably get in a fight and knock somebody out. Um, Sorry. Was that a bit snobby of me? I'm sorry. Um, no, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a real ale fan. I'm a proper beer fan. I'm not really a lager drinker. Some lagers I like in the sunshine. It's very nice. You know, San Miguel. Or, um, I went to Costa Rica when I was on the cruise ships. Imperial. If you ever see a bottle of Imperial, fantastic. Pacifico from Mexico is decent and all, they sell that in Aldi. Anyway, coming back to what we're going on about here, we're talking about quintessential British beers. And these are the kind of beers that you say, you know what, whilst you're in England, have a bottle of this or go to the pub and have a pint of this. Uh, we're back to Marston's Brewery, big brewery Marston's, now they're joined forces with Carlsberg. In my previous video, the Cumberland, the Jennings Cumberland, I did have a bit of, a, not a rant, but concern over how... Since Carlsberg got involved, there's a couple of their breweries that have shut down the tours and the tap rooms. They're blaming it on COVID, but is it Carlsberg trying to cheapen things and dump things down? At the end of the day, they try and minimise the costs. It's what big companies do. Once shareholders are involved and profits and loss and the accountants get involved, it's all about, right, this is your product, but we want it at minimum cost to maximise profit. And some people will not notice the effects. Some people will drink a beer. John Smith's, for example, by Heineken. It's fodder now. It's dreadful. I've seen other people review it on their channels and I'm sort of half like, shall I pick it up and review it just for the hell of it? I used to love John Smith's on cask. On cask, not the John Smith smooth stuff. Excuse me. I don't even think John Smith you can get on cask anymore. But when it was brewed... Sort of, I think when I had it, it was Scottish and Newcastle, so it was prior to the Heineken takeover. Um, so it was sort of still brewed at Tadcaster to a certain standard, um, but that's all changed now. John Smith's is watered down, syrupy um, fodder. And I think in reviewing it, but you've got to get it four pack. So, Carlsberg, coming back to my point, sorry, I do go off on tangents on these, these videos, so bear with. Bear with! Um, I am a bit concerned about Carlsberg and Mar Carlsberg Marston's. I think the Marston side of things are concentrating on the pubs and the restaurants, and they've got they've got Marston's Inns now. I suppose it's a, trying to um, go up against like a Premier Inn or a Travel Lodge. So they're concentrating more on the pub chains, and then they've left Carlsberg more in charge of the brewing, which sort of concerns me. So this beer we're going to do now. I'll show you what we're going to do. I've had this many a time, many, 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 many a times. This is a beer that Carl's, uh, Carlsberg, that Marston's took the rights to. So this was originally brewed by Thwaites in Lancashire. Uh, it's a bottle of Wainwright. Wainwright, the golden beer, it's called. It used to be Thwaites Wainwright, and it was named after a chap, I think, that climbed mountains. We'll read the back of the bottle in a bit. I can't remember I found. Probably should have done more research, but we're going to go with it. Um, but yeah, it's got oh, it's Wayne Wright the Golden Beer. Marston's, I don't think they've taken over Thwaites. Because Thwaites have had a bit of a relaunch. Um, I went up to the Yorkshire Dales, not last year, the year before. Uh, we were in a little town of Settle and there was a big pub there and it was a Thwaites pub. And it was very quite posh and classy. And they had all their cast beers on there. Um, and it sort of seems like they've had a bit of a rebrand. But they did have one called Thwaites Golden Ale which I think is is on par with this. Now they've sold the Wainwright branding to Marston. So this used to be Thwaites Wainwright. It's now just called Wainwright, the golden beer. It's 4.1% ABV. 
500 milliliter bottle and it's got a W. It's not the Waterstones logo, it's for Wainwright. Should we get this out in doing Lars? Um, I used to really like this beer before I became a bit of a hophead. It was um, oh, a lot of CO2 release on the opening, we like a bit of that. Um, yeah, before I became a hophead and I was into more sort of sweeter traditional styles of beer, whenever I saw this on cask in a pub, I'd, I'd sort of get it. And my local was was a, a Marston's pub and they used to have this on quite a bit. They'd circulate between this, Hobgoblin, they'd always have Pedigree on, but the second hand pulled it'd be this, Hobgoblin or the Jennings Cumberland or the Oxford Gold. They were the sort of four ones they had quite regularly. Um, and I used to pick this up in bottle in, in Aldi as well. This, by the way, you can get in all major supermarkets. It's it's quite easy. It's part of your four for six in Tesco. It's probably part of your four for three now in Morrison's and Asda. Uh, Sainsbury's, I'm sure they sell it as well. And Aldi sell it for £1.49. So probably those other ones. They do Aldi price match now, don't they? £1.49. It's not going to cost you the earth. And there's your beer in the glass. It is a golden beer after all. Certainly lighter than the uh, last couple that we did. That is golden going on to blonde. It's very see-through, there's a bit of haze there from the chilled haze from my shed. Um, white, pure white head on it that's going away rather quickly. Probably because it's this glass, it doesn't hold head well. But yeah, it looks, looks like a, a, a good, people that like clear see-through beers, Clarity will love this. And you know what, they have a place in society. I'm all about the hop forward, wah, sort of citrusy, hoppy, in your face stuff. But this is traditional. If it's done right and brewed okay, it's it's a lovely style of beer. Let's go for some aroma, we'll put that in there. We're gonna give it a whiff and see what we can sniff. It smells kind of sweet. Almost like a honey vibe to it. Getting again a multi character, more biscuity than dry bread. Not getting a lot of hot aroma. It does smell like what I expect a sweet gold nail to smell like. Not really any pepperiness on there though. It smells sweet. It smells sweet and quaffable, is probably the words I've described. To it. Right, the head's gone away now. Like I said, this, this glass doesn't hold head well. So don't put it against the beer. And I've just washed it as well, so that probably won't help. It doesn't smell bad, but it, it, the, the, the aroma doesn't blow me away. Put it that way. But again, I wouldn't expect it to. It's a traditional golden beer brewed at a cost by a big brewery. Right, that's bottoms up down the hatch. Cheers. It's refreshing. It's not a bad drink. Carbonation's light. Probably the least gassy out of the beer I've had today. Um, nice flavour to it. There is some sweetness there. It does almost feel like there's a bit of honey involved or something, like a, a, a sweet element to it. You're getting the bread. Uh, biscuit malt, sorry, down the middle of the tongue. Bit of lacy vision for those that love the lacing. Clear up that um, chilled haze. Probably a colder than cellar temperature. I would have thought it warmed up by now. It's been in this uh, in the house probably about forty-five minutes or so, coming up to an hour. Look at that! Look at that! How it jigs and how it laces. Lovely. You know, for traditional. Those that like the beer clear and clarity. This is the clearest one we've had. Ooh, now I've jigged it. I'm getting the honey sweet element, but I am getting that peppery spiciness from the hops. Overall on the taste, it's quite muted. The, the hoppiness is quite muted. It is a sweeter flavored beer. When you first put it in your mouth, 
it's mainly biscuity malt down the middle of the tongue. You're getting a little bit of sweetness down the sides as well, with a tiny touch of that peppery spiciness. It's not big, but it's there. But it's um, it's not the main contributing factor. It's like a, it's it's pulled back a bit. And then on the back end, you're getting like a demerara sugar kind of vibe. Sweetness, a little bit of malt, and like a demerara sugar, similar to the Cumberland Ale. But the pep the pepperiness is more in the aroma now than it is in the taste. It's very quaffable. I mean, look how quickly I've got down that. As a, a, in terms of having it sort of chilled like I have, very easy to knock back. Very quaffable. Very drinkable. It's. It's not bad, but I mean, th these beers are always going to be better on cask. Last time I had it on cask, ooh, now, <clears throat> excuse me, the last time I had this on cask, it wasn't very good. But I was in a pub that is more a lagery pub. This was the only um, ale that they had on. I, w I was, I can't remember where we were, we were away, it wasn't somewhere local. Um, but I, I just thought mm, it's just not kept very well because it was really the, the the actual beard didn't look right it, the, the head was very bubbly and it was a bit on the cloudy side so maybe it was the bottom of the barrel I don't know but it just didn't seem to be kept very well so I had a, I had a pint of this I think I had the one and then I think I went on to like a San Miguel or something I'm sure, I can't remember where we were were we up Liverpool or somewhere I'm sure we were somewhere like that and we were watching the footy, me and the wife had gone away. I remember there was a Liverpool game on, but I can't remember where it was. Was it Birmingham? <sighs> My memory can be terrible at times. Uh, I'm getting old, you see, 41. All right, it might be people saying 41s are not old, but I'm starting to feel myself crack down a bit. Not right. So there you go, Wayne Wright. Let me read what it says on the back, and then I'll rate it, and then uh, you can be on your way. So Wainwright, the golden beer, a superb, thirst-quenching, refreshing beer, packed full of flavour, lightly hopped with subtle sweet notes and a delicate citrus aroma. Inspired by the author Alfred, Alfred Wainwright, famous for his Lakeland Fell guidebooks, hence the hills, mountains. For every summit Wainwright conquered through his passion and, and commitment, each one delivered the ultimate reward. Refreshingly rewarding for those who think they've earned it. www.wainwrightgoldenbeer.co.uk It is part of Carlsberg Marston's. It does say Wolverhampton. So this is brewed now at the Banks' Brewery in Wolverhampton, which is where Carl, well, Marston's headquarters is, or Carlsberg Marston's admin headquarters, a big building next to the old Banks' Brewery. Um, it's a... Yeah, it's, it's refreshing enough. I'm drinking it. It's going down nicely enough. Flavour is a bit lacking maybe on the other beers that I've had today. Uh, well, the Cumberland. The Cumberland's probably the best one of the three I've had. Uh, Southwold was quite salty malty. But this is more... It does feel like it's got like a honey vibe to it. Mmm. Definite honey vibe going on. It's it's nice though. It's okay. It's not bad. That's going to get a thumbs up. Again, like the Acnums, it's... Mm, yeah, I'll give it a thumbs up. Probably needs a bit more going on about it for my particular tastes. For it to really be up there and be like, whoa. But... When I last... Well, I'd, I'd have it on cask again. I'd like to try it on cask again. And, and just see where we go. So a thumbs up from me, like, share, subscribe. Thank you very much for watching and we'll see you again for some more beer reviews right here on the Hop House. Ciao for now people.